like to say I miss you guys. It's been a while since I did Friday Night Light. And um, thank you for all of those who have sent me messages. Sheikh, we missed you. And those who didn't care about me not coming, I thank you both. You know, especially Sheikh Kamal, who never said anything. <laughs> I told those people to tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Which group? Yeah, the, the other one. <laughs> the one. Not this one. Okay. Um, type. Uh, brother, we, this side for the sisters, so you, you go this uh, side. Jazakallah khair. Um, today, uh, it's talking about what masculinity means in Islam. Uh, and I think this is a very interesting topic. I believe, you know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, national figures who, you know, talk about this topic a lot lately, became Muslims. Uh, everybody, uh, you know, talking about uh, this, you know, there's so many things going on on the social media about this topic lately. And I will be honest with you, I think that's a very good topic to talk about uh, because many different, uh, you know, reasons. Uh, because like any, many other topics, it's one of these things that people can go to either extremes. But I think this is a problem that I have uh, seen a lot as somebody who don't, you know, who older, seeing young generations, have myself, have ki kids, you know, uh, who belong also to different generations. Um, and I've seen the difference between all these different generations and how they deal with this topic, brothers and sisters, um, from a different perspective. So I hope that I will be more listening, uh, more than talking today. Uh, at least uh, because I'm very happy that we have with us uh, Sheikh Kamal, my right hand side, and also our guest here, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Sayyid, he's graduated from, he's from New York, from Brooklyn. Um, I guess that's why you picked the topic, that's right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, and also, he, alhamdulillah, studied in Azhar, has a Sharia degree in Arabic language and Islamic studies. Um, he also very involved with youth. He's a uh, you know, mentor, director for youth, imam, uh, you name it, uh, for uh, mass, uh, I believe, in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. uh, which is a beautiful uh, place. I have visited them so many times before over the years, alhamdulillah. Um, so uh, we'll have a very fruitful discussion. I'm looking forward to hear from you guys about this topic as well and to hear your perspectives about it. Um, but let me start with Shad Rahman and ask first, tell me, uh, when did you graduate from Al-Azhar? So uh, I, uh, I actually was at Umm Al-Qura University. Umm Al-Qura? Yes, yes, yes. Even better. In Mecca. Okay. <laughs> Mecca, so, I mean. <laughs> Yes. So uh, I don't know if we have the... the why the, somebody told me the Azhar? They may have done it, well, because I'm Egyptian, that's probably... That's <laughs> why. Just the immediate... Uh, yeah, okay, Umm al Qura. that's, that's <laughs> nice, sorry about that. No, that's fine. I, I, I read it in Azhar. No, no, I figured, I figured it, it's a common... Uh, people come Sheikh Ammar. Make this, uh, make this option, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I don't know, we, we don't have the, uh, the school pride. <laughs> he's not here, so it's <laughs> that's okay. That's easy, yeah. <laughs> well, he's from New York too, he'll, 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 uh, yeah. he'll uh, catch so up. So Umm al Qura. that's, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Jamia to Umm al Qura, uh, uh, when did you graduate? Uh, 2017. 2017. Have you ever felt jealous of those who studied in Medina because <laughs> you're in Mecca? So it, or I'll, you felt you're, you're better? I was about to say, we don't have the, the inter school pride that you guys will have here in the US, but I guess it's coming out now. The, yeah. <laughs> the Medina, of course. Uh, we have in Riyadh uh, from Jamia to Imam. Uh -huh. We consider both of you guys lower Low class. Level. <laughs> 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 well, just kidding. well, for us, we, we took pride in the fact that we follow uh, Jamaat al Iman's curriculum yes. in fiqh, particularly. Yes. So that was my my um, uh, major in uh, fiqh was fiqh. So, nice. so I mean, I guess in that case, maybe you can hold, take me under your yeah. wing. In that case, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine Jamaat al Medina when you start just to start fresh of the boat, as we say, and he start with Bidayat al Mushtahid? I mean, it makes no oh, sense. Challenge. You know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, but um, alhamdulillah. So you study fiqh and jamat al Man, what, what year you graduated? 2017. 2017. Yeah. 
Okay, how many years it took you to so, study there? Uh, seven and a half, just in so doing the Arabic and then Not the all of them in bachelor. I'm sorry? I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, the Arabic, Arabic studies, then yeah. after that, four years in bachelor. Of course, yeah. Excellent. So, you actually cut Mecca, or you lived in Mecca when there is not much things in Mecca, that's right? The, the crazy part, and everyone says it, but the amount of change that has happened since I've left just the past five, six years is insane. It's, it's, it, when, I, when we go back for Umrah, if Allah bless us, you know, we, I get to see it just, it's a new place. It doesn't feel the same anymore. Yeah, alhamdulillah. I mean, just living in Mecca, it's a great blessing. There's nothing also, like it. It is, it's, it's a scary a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Can Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, he used to say, I don't want to live in Mecca because the sin in Mecca is like a hundred outside Mecca. So he used to be scared of, of living in Mecca. But in any way, there is also great reward, multiplied reward. Just praying in Haram, being in Mashaykh in, in Haram, Mecca, yeah. is just an unbelievable uh, experience. Alhamdulillah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I hope okay. so. I, nice. I hope I can have that honor. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Uh, speaking, Sheikh, of uh, the masculinity topic, I just saw, so one of our Sheikhs, uh, Imams of the Haram, Sheikh Hassan Bukhari, I literally just saw in my feed a picture of him standing with <laughs> Habib, Khabib, the, uh, the boxer, the, yeah. the fighter. I'm like, where is this coming from? <laughs> How is he with the, him in this picture? But it's showing up now to making it around. So nice, <laughs> nice. Sheikh Kamal, no. what does masculinity is about? What does this word mean? Oh, so, uh, to both you guys, but okay. I mean, I don't know if I have a good definition. Do you have a good definition of it? Uh, are we doing the, uh, the Islamic, you know, Jamia Mana definition or are we doing... Uh, I think we'll do that one. Interesting. Because, <laughs> because I'll, I'll tell you why. <laughs> I set myself up. Yeah? <laughs> so the reason I said that is that, it, I mean, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of different things and values, right? Um, and, and the reason I said the Islamic one is that, as we were talking earlier, so in the West, like, with almost every topic, they 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 start off at one extreme, and then when they realize they're wrong, they don't go to the middle; they go to the other extreme. And I have examples, yani, and some of them are like PG something, you know, not not eight at least. But something will be really frowned upon, and then they go all the way to the other extreme. They don't go to the middle. Same thing with masculinity; like you have where it's. Uh, I don't like to use the term toxic, but it's all about you know not showing your feelings, not this, not this, not that. And now they realize that was too much. Now they're trying to play games. And instead of going to the middle and say, okay, let's keep it balanced, now they're saying, oh, there's no such thing as gender. It's just because you gave your boy a gun and a truck, he became a boy, and your girl, because you gave her a doll, she became a doll, which is absolute nonsense. I mean, anyone who's had children knows this is absolute garbage. But the point is that they're now trying to say, oh, there's no such thing as masculinity, and that, uh, or not no such thing, but try to make it look bad and try to redefine it in a very extreme way. And that's why the Islamic definition is good because you're, like we see the Prophet ﷺ, the best man ﷺ, and he would cry and he would tell his friends, I love you, and all those kinds of things. But before I get into that, just give yeah, us but, your. But I just want to make sure that we are on the same page. Because, for example, when we talk about feminine, feminine, y y some people, like, we do two different channels. I'm talking about something, and somebody talk about something else. You know, some talk about liberal, talk about democracy. These, these terms are very loaded. Yeah. So I just want to make sure that we are, what we are here, so the audience understand what exactly we mean by masculinity here when we sure. talk. I think the, the best thing that I was able to uh, come across is so again, within the realm of, as Sheikh Kamal mentioned, of the Islamic approach to masculinity, femininity, I would argue that it is, so let's say masculinity, it is traits that are either present naturally or that Allah uh, prefers or loves to see in a man or a male. And similarly for femininity, it would be the exact opposite. Traits that are either Allah creates within or that made them predisposed towards or that he would love to see from a female. That, very that, good. That's and when we talk about these traits, we talk about the traits that are very, sp very specific to men, or can be common between men and women. I, I've um, or both. Yes, I, I found that um, praiseworthy traits. All the traits that Allah praises in the Quran, effectively everything that I've come across. So I would, I would argue all the traits are found in both men and women. It's just the way that we express them are different. So, for example, 
uh, 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 modesty. Haya is 100% expected from both genders. But the way that it's expressed, that's where the differences occur. Very beautiful. Very good. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to, there was a, there was a study and they, they asked young men, high school age, what makes a man? Give me li a list of things that make a man. These are things they actually said. Can you ask these guys? Okay, let's hear it. What makes a man? You know, it, it fails. Every time I do this in an Islamic setting, it doesn't work. Because they know what I'm looking for. So they start saying, oh, taqwa, salah. <laughs> we did it before. Okay, go ahead. Let's hear it. Tell them. No, okay. Exactly nice. <laughs> All right, well. The ability yeah, to control enough. your anger. I'm just uh, so because there are a lot of people on the audience. Yeah, they're right there. Leading and protecting your family. Leading and protecting your family. Leading the family, huh? I like that. <laughs> Ayo, Malik. Nam. Providing. Okay. Abdullah. I was gonna say sabr. Sabr. Mm -hmm. Sabr makes a man, huh? So if, okay. Go, go ahead. No, good. A moment. Having, courage in, Having courage, in courage in the face of uncertainty. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, sisters, what makes a man? Facial hair. Nam. Dependability. Okay. Nice. Very nice. We yeah, heard honesty. All right. So let me read uh, what what these uh, high school students said. So what is a man or what makes a man? They said athletic ability. <laughs> yeah. Being buff, being muscular. Six pack, having a six pack, making money. And that's why those guys come and they're doing this all the time, showing you that I have money, I'm a man, I'm a kid that's successful. So they said economic success and, uh, and also uh, certain conquests. Zina related <laughs> makes them uh, a man. Disaster, yeah. and and then anger. That's his way. His ability to pick up girls. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the more the list, the longer the list, the more of a man he is. And that's why they boast about it. I mean, people who know rap music know everything on this list. That's all it is. That's all it's about. Uh, money, how tough you are. You bust a cap in somebody. Ma'arif That's all it is. <laughs> and. Uh, okay, anyways, I don't want to take up all the, but, but this is a big deal. This is how they see a man. And then they, things that were not manly, that, uh, li like things like love, um, kindness, smiling. Uh, if someone is by, stand, by like, uh, let's just say, street man standards, a slightly effeminate, he becomes a mama's boy. It's a bad thing to be a mama's boy, even though. Three times in Islam, your mother, your mother, your mother, right? Then your father. Um, things like if someone is in drama club or he's a thespian, what happens? The jocks make fun of him. And what's the description of a jock? Same stuff in the list. Yeah. You know, he gets the cheerleader. He's muscular. ish, Probably dumb as a rock. <laughs> but that's the jock. So, it, I mean, it starts early. Then, uh, sorry, but look, I'm telling you. There was, like, they show you how the male deals with uh, heartbreak in the movies or like that movie where the guy comes home and his wife and his son is dead. What does he do? He cries very little, right? He cries a little bit. But then what, it, that, that sorrow turns to? Anger. Anger instantly. And you get that shot, the camera from up top and he screams, no. And that, or he screams the name of the guy and then the rest of the movie, He's butchering everyone down the street <laughs> until he gets to that guy at the end and he throws him into a, a sharp pole. <laughs> that's it. Huh. That's, that's, that's the movie. Too much Bollywood movie. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's his Hollywood <laughs> issue. And because I don't play video games, when they looked at masculinity and how it's presented in the video games, it's always this. You guys tell me this. It's always this guy. He's, he's buff, you know. And he's got broad shoulders, you know, big jaws, and he's got that five o'clock shadow. It's not a full beard, he's not Sunni yet, and it's not, <laughs> he's not that smooth, sweet guy. Kida, kida, rough kida. Am I right or what? Yeah. Huh? And big guns, of course. Big guns. So this is, this is just the beginning. This is what we're dealing with. We're still going to get That's into it. That's the image of, even the word masculine, it's about, you know, 
There's something. I mean, uh, when I heard the first time the word as a non English speaker, I was thinking about muscles, like it's coming from somebody who is muscular, like they have a big muscle. So it's, it's, it's a very physical. But I will argue that men physically different than women. Yeah. That you know, if a woman look like a man, I mean, that will not be something good. That's why in Islam she doesn't dress like a man. We don't dress like a woman, and and Allah created us so different. Our even our, like this is a biology, uh, you know. So being masculine in a sense that you. You know, because men are supposed to be defender, most are supposed to be provider, work harder. That's what they're supposed to be. So that's why physically Allah created them in a different way. But today, even with Muslim audiences, this doesn't sit well. Yeah. Even with practicing Muslim women, they hear that and like, I know women who are strong. No, that's not what we're saying here. There's probably one woman named Fifi somewhere who can beat up a guy. But, <laughs> but generally, that's not the case, you know, and it's just, you know, the other day, uh, this is uh, maybe a few years ago, I was on a plane, last time I was on a plane. This lady's coming in, has got a whole bunch of things in her hand, and she's got her carry-on, and while she's holding all this stuff, she's trying to put with one hand, trying to put the carry-on up. And I've already sat down, and my hands are free, so I got up. Like a gentleman. I, 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 uh, that's, <laughs> that's how I roll. So I got up and I put it, best. She goes, oh, thank you very much. I usually am a very strong, independent woman, but my hands were tied up. I wanted to tell her, don't worry, deep down we're, we're all strong, independent women. <laughs> yeah, what is this nonsense? I just help you with your bag. It doesn't make you weak or anything. But then that's also how women are, like, have been trained to see that if the man helps you, that means you're the helpless damsel in distress. No. If it were a man and his hands were filled, I would have helped him also. It's the same thing. It's not about you being a man or woman. But this is like how it's become now. And so Muslim women will come to you and say, why can't uh, a, a woman marry four? But wait till you marry one. See how much you hate them. And then, then ask me if you want three more. Or why do the men pray in the front? But you're a Muslim. You don't know why the men pray in the front? You don't know? So, but this is what I'm talking about. Like where, So the masculinity, at, one point, at some point they hate it. But at the same point, at the same time, they want to be a man. Everyone's trying to be a man. Okay, we're getting on. <laughs> Go ahead. Somebody save me. <laughs> no. You know, Sheikh, I think it's, it's, it's all, I think all we're going to be like, you know, going around the same issue, which is, I remember in, in a, at the beginning of a, there was a Sira book that I, I was reading and it was saying that in the, in the foreword, the, the intro, he said, all movements, the Sheikh who had written the book, Allah uh, had written, said, all movements in history have come up, have come out as an, a reaction to a previous movement. And he gave the example, it was written in the 80s, so he gave an example of capitalism and, so, and socialism and, and, you know, and so on and so forth. So he said, and they, they uh, constantly bounce from one extreme to another, exactly as you mentioned. So, and he, he continued, he said, except for the movement of, uh, of straight from Deen, al-Ilahiyya, something that's coming straight from God, the divinely inspired uh, message, and that's coming irrespective of right or left. It's coming with the truth and it will always be, you'll always find the center balance there. And I think it speaks exactly to what you're saying. As long as somebody is constantly thinking of their role in comparison to somebody else's role or another category of people's role, they will never get it right. Mm. And even if they hit right, like this woman telling you, I'm, well, hey, get, she had to explain, hey, just, just to be clear, I could have done it myself yeah. in other circumstances. She didn't need to do that, but she felt obligated because I need to let him know in comparison to him or other men or so on, I'm also strong. And that's what they're teaching young men and women today It's that it needs to be in comparison to something else. You always feel incomplete. You always feel like you can achieve something. And you, you feel like the woman who, you know, I don't know who it is, but whoever uh, got the highest, you know, weightlifting in the Olympics, the woman, right? Mm. That's that. She is the strongest woman in the world. That's amazing. That's a, that's a, that's a huge, uh, um, you know, goal. But as long as you're comparing it to someone who's, or another category of people, men, who are completely, utterly biologically different than you, you're, you're going to feel, uh, you know, less than. And like you didn't achieve that much and it wasn't that big of a deal. No, it was. And you'll never be by a lot. Like, men can't compete in who, you know, who has the most, uh, who gave the birth, the birth to the most kids. It's just biologically not capable. So as long as they are keeping us uh, comparing to one another, we always feel inadequate. And that's where they get you. Uh, I just want to say something to all my brothers uh, here. You know how we say 
You don't demand your respect, you earn your respect. You don't demand masculinity and manhood, you earn it. You have to earn it. Like if you really want to be treated like a man, you need to act like one. If you want to be seen as a man who have this, you know, status and specialty quality and traits and, you know, man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have put very unique special to men. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have favor men in, in, in many areas, as he favored women in so many areas as well. You know, and بِمَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ Allah have favored some of you over others. Give you tasks, he didn't give it to women. He gave tasks and responsibilities to you as men, he didn't give it to women. So, but that's something you have to learn how to earn it. It's just not because you have a production tools to impregnate women, make you a man directly. You're a male, that's fine. But we talk about something beyond just the physical, you know, uh, uh, pry part here. Much bigger than, you know, than this and, and much uh, more important than this uh, as a trait, as, as, uh, as, we, as we said earlier. Uh, so I, I think this is for me a very important point that I'm going to earn that. I'm, I need to stand up for this. I need to work to, to reach that level. And that's a big responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have. There's a big difference between a biological father and a dad. There is a big difference between a mommy and a, just a mother who gave birth to a child. There is, you have to earn that mommy status, daddy status. You have to earn that, you know, that level of being real man, real leader, real, you know, qawama, uh, which is leadership and, and, and um, and basically that's state that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have created you to reach and to, to achieve in your, in, your, in your life. You know, Sheikh, on that note, the, the difference between, so I, I, I believe in, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that part of our test in this life, and Allah gave this test to men and to women, and it's a different, t it's the same test, but we, we handle it differently, or we deal with it differently, is that in our jibilla, in our creation, in our biological nature, we are either predisposed to, or we're more inclined to certain behaviors, or it's in us. So for example, for men, we're, we're biologically much more likely to be aggressive, or we're much more likely to celebrate aggression. Like we like to watch fighters and, and all that stuff and you know, be uh, hyper competitive. And we, uh, part of the traits of toxic masculinity is an um, obsession with anger. And so it's the exact opposite of what Islam dictates. So if somebody is, has less control over his anger, he's perceived as more manly. He explodes much quicker, and but beats people up and you know doesn't tolerate anything. You know he's a real man. That's the exact opposite. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Laysa shadidu basura." Right? The the strong man is not the one who can win the fight. The strong man is the one who can hold himself in in the anger. So, men are predisposed, or but males in general are predisposed or more inclined to certain behaviors that are Islam does recognize them as toxic, if it goes too far. Right? The inability to control anger, aggression, um, vanity, or whatever it's the case. And women similar, right? Um, uh, vanity is another one, but that, that would be, I guess, specific to women. Uh, Islam, uh, Allah commands us, or commands women particularly, to uh, um, hide, hide her beauty when she steps out of the house, and so on and so forth. And there's a natural desire not to do that, natural desire to show off where you, well, you, part of your test is to, to fight that, and, and so on and so forth. So each gender is tasked with their own specific tests while being predisposed to do, do this. So you're going to have to fight off your natural inclination because you recognize and you acknowledge it to be wrong. I think that's, so that's controlling great. it, yeah. but it's not to strip it completely, yeah. which is that's the opposite. Like, and, and, and I think about yeah. like, I'm not expert in history uh, of, you know, culture and stuff like that. But from what I know, uh, and I think that's something also across the board in every culture. There is so much abuse to women through history. Yeah. There's no, no doubt men abused women through history. And it wasn't for nothing the Prophet ﷺ died before he died. He said, I ask you to take care of women. Haqq al They are basically weak. They've been taken advantage of, been abused. Okay, so that's why there's so much emphasis on the importance of protecting them and protecting their right. But that doesn't take me to the other end, to the other opposite. Yeah. That I make women above men or, you know, controlling men. Or I take, 
the strength and the, the basically what the quality of men away just to make them like you know feminine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he want to create men and women one thing he will create us just one thing but he creates something called male and creates something called female there is set there's a lot of commonality but there is also differences in, in the way they express themselves the way they carry themselves the way the quality physical and emotional and uh, in all aspects and responsibilities as well and some of them are shared some of them are different from one to another um, so I, I think that's that, let's go back to the issue of just being a reaction to it Jamil what is missing today in, in, in boys to be real men um, so uh, let, uh, let me build up to that okay. so going back to Sorry. when I said earlier very quickly I mentioned like kindness is like not not masculine smiling perceived by young males is not very masculine I'll tell you something interesting, Sheikh Wali. We'll have kids like you who grew up in this masjid and you know they're young and they just come running up to me and hugs and all of this and they're always naughty and smiling and running. The minute they hit 13, 14, and then they listen to more rap music, they just walk by me, kid. When they give me salam, just kid. Yeah, how many workshops did we do? And some of the, the, the guys here took it on how to give salam properly and look people in the eye and raise your voice and ask about how they're doing and smile in their face. Some of you took him, and I'm looking at some faces in here. Because I was sick and tired of these teenagers. Lish, <clears throat> because the male, they call it in the streets, uh, yani, I, I know about the streets. It's called, <laughs> it's called hard. Yani, khalas, kid, they're, they're stoic, they're quiet, they don't show a lot of emotion, no smiling. You know, I used to take the bus in this very uh, thug part of town, and phew, coming off the boat from Sudan and stuff. I smile at people and they'll just <laughs> give you these dirty looks and stuff because that's what the male does. I don't smile at another male, not a puppy. I'll give you this dirty look, you give me a dirty look. I don't even know you. And people give me dirty looks like I've never met you before. What's your problem, yeah? But that's the male thing, right? And that's, then. That's a New York thing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a New York. So that when, when you have a, a, a boy, he's born, he starts to walk a little bit, you teach him what? You throw a jab, throw a punch, yell, punch, okay? And then you tell him, don't cry. Because boys, don't cry. So boys don't cry, type, he's four, and he <laughs> wants to get it out. Oh, hey, don't cry. And I admit this is a problem I have until now. I hate crying, I hate when children cry. Because, you know, in Sudan, it's a little toxic. Everything is about masculinity. So, and I always say, like I grew up around the world, and then I was in Europe, and then from Europe we went to Sudan. That was like really my first time to live in Sudan. And it was the first day of school, and this guy I barely know, because I'm just, my first day, he, he goes, are you a man? This is seventh grade. I said, yes. He said, punch the wall as hard as you can. <laughs> it was a brick wall. <laughs> and I remember asking to myself, what does, what does this have to do with being a man? And that's actually just proving that I'm stupid. If I hit this wall, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's it, yeah. So everything is about being a man. So you don't cry, you don't shake, you don't shiver, and but now let's go to if you're no, of course not. <laughs> so if your friend now has a problem, all right, and they're feeling hurt, generally, a, a male cannot talk to his friend about his feelings. He has to keep them bottled inside. You can't come and say, you know, I'm feeling really sad and stuff. The guy will be like, oh, let's go play a video game. Method. Anything, I don't want to hear about your sob story. And when males don't sit and, and talk to each other like that. That's so, that's so problematic because the Prophet said, uh, when he came after the Battle of Badr and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like rebuked the Prophet and Abu Bakr included for their decision on how to deal with the, uh, the captives after Badr. He found them both crying. So he asked, what is making you cry? Because if it involves me, I'll cry with you. And if it doesn't involve me, it's so beautiful. He says, Bakaytu libuka ikuma. I'll cry because you're crying. And look, and this is Umar, the one that we're always narrating weak narrations about him chopping people's <laughs> heads off. This is Umar. When I say, tell me a man in Islamic history, the first thing you're gonna say, Umar ibn Khattab. And he's saying, I'll cry because you're crying. So I love how in Islam there's this wonderful balance. It's not just 
you're stoic, you don't show emotions, you don't talk about your feelings, uh, but you can do both. And look at the example of the Prophet ﷺ, look at the companions if you're ever confused. That's how the male is. They had just come from battle too, so nobody can say anything about Absolutely. You know, like where's the, that's the balance. They just came from battle, they, did, they won a historic battle, and well, here's the, the crying, the, 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 the balance, the counter balance of it. SubhanAllah. Yeah, so what do you think Shah Abdul is missing? What, what we are here trying to accomplish? What, I, what, what, what are the message that we, like if we can take few things that you think, or the brothers can even, the sister can talk about this as well. You know, I would like to hear from them. What, are the, what is missing today? I think What's Sheikh, the problem with masculinity today? I think Sheikh is, is the, if I were to, I mean there's a lot of ingredients of course missing, but one, if I were to narrow down one essential ingredient, it would be a good example. People, as much as you teach, as much as we learn, we've all read books and we read about Omar, we read about Abu Bakr, you know, etc. We just need someone in our community, someone, uh, you know, mahsus, you know, that we can feel, we can be tangible and model it for me. And I want to feel proud of the way you act. We all feel proud of the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam acted. No one can dare call him weak and so on. Look at the, the, the Khabib, the example, the, the, you know, he's, he's such a solid example, of course, putting aside the the, the uh, fiqh opinion about you know, punching in the face and that kind of thing. Um, but look at how he acts out, outside of the ring. His humbleness, and he has made like, Muslims so proud of being humble versus like these people, these UFC fighters. Arrogant. arrogant you have to, you have to sell the match, right? You yeah. have to be as arrogant as possible. And you would see that, like the first, the first sign of you know, what's popular out there, because unless we're, we're just spending an hour like research, what's going on on Twitter and, and TikTok and whatever, the first sign, the people who are gonna inform you of what's popular is the 14-year-olds in your community, right? You can see how they're acting, what, you know, what, what are the phrases they're saying, now I have to look it up on Urban Dictionary. And then now you know what's going on. So when they're being arrogant and they're being rude and disgusting, it's Conor McGregor was, was, was the popular guy. And then all of a sudden, Khabib comes out and he's humble and he's thanking Allah and he's grateful and he you know, only goes as far as he needs to, but he puts people in their place. So he has the strength, but he has all these Islamic traits. So if I were to narrow it down, we need examples. We need people that we feel proud of, because when you're proud, when you see value and you see you're proud of this, you're gonna follow it, especially as a teenager, as a young man. So if I'm a teenager boy, or I'm a young man, and I feel I'm a man of the house, but you know what? You don't work, you don't earn, you don't provide for your family. You know what? You don't help your parents. You don't take responsibility. You don't act like a role model. Yeah. So Th that doesn't go with saying I'm a man. It's a mismatch, yeah. It's just how they Good. want to it's, feel. It's not biology, right? So, so my message would be like, number one, the don't take the example of a male from celebrities, from movies, from rap songs, from these people who put this fake uh, facade or this fake mask on. And we did an exercise here in the masjid with the youth. It was really beautiful. Uh, everyone got a piece of paper that had a mask on it. And I still have them. I was just reading through them. It just had a mask and you had to write down the mask you present to people. So some of our youth wrote down that, you know, everything is okay, I'm brave, I'm confident, this. Then I said, okay, now this is what you're faking to people. Yes. Flip it to the other side. And there were no names written, nobody knows who wrote what. And then on the other side, write down how you really feel. That same guy who says, I'm confident, wish I had girls like me, all this nonsense, <laughs> on the other side. I'm very insecure, I'm always afraid, I this, I this, I that. And so now you have to act. So don't act, but also don't be a sissy. <laughs> That's, that came off so bad. Look, I'll tell you, there, because look, in Islam, we have something known as khawarim al-muru'ah. And these are things that like take away from your chivalry, from your um, dignity, awa dignity, kida, your, your presence, right? And and the scholars go through things. I mean, there are certain things they're not haram, but they're just not appropriate. And some things are not manly. And yes, you can always say, well, who said the, who has the manly definition and who wrote this dictionary on what is manly? No, people <laughs> wrote it over. It, I think it's a culture thing. Yes, culturally is what I was going to say. Yeah. So, but but there are also some things now, like a lot of times. Uh, and again, I'm willing to admit it could be my Sudanese background. I'm willing to admit that, all right? So don't get too upset. But like a lot of times I'll see a guy talking and be like, how is this guy a man? Okay, too soft. And I'm sick and tired of the hair that's half covering the eyes. Khalas already. Be a man already. 
ما <laughs> Yusuf goes. <laughs> <laughs> but wallah, it just you go to school and you just see this guy and he's got this very girly hairstyle. And the whole time I'm talking to him, I'm like, what are you doing? You're shampoo commercial, you know what? It's okay, be a man a little bit. All the time just fixing like this, I'm like this, and the hair is coming down like in the movies. Enough already. Be a man. Anime. That's the anime. The anime. I don't know if Naruto or Nafuto. Enough already. But there's also something important about being, like presenting yourself in a, in a proper way, not to... يعني, yeah, where do you draw but, but the line at? What if, what if said, that doesn't mean, like, is it a cultural thing? Like, Sheikh, I, I would what, what's the most unmanly thing for you, Sheikh Abdurrahman, to see in the youth? That's oh. really not, I'm like, so, like, the opposite of being a man. Huh. Uh, okay, if I were to put it in a word, insecurity. I know this is completely different than the feminine qualities we're talking about. Oh, you're I, going, I, uh, I'm, I'm going physical. Yeah, you're oh, like, going a, like a clear, well, get, the thing yeah. is, like, the insecurity. Yeah. So I would say, you know, the, the concern with these, I think we, we living in the 21st century, 2022, right? And I'm from New York where it's a lot more liberal than here you guys have in, in Texas, where there's some things that people just pretend they don't see or they don't understand. Like what uh, certain feminine qualities, or certain masculine qualities, like, oh, I don't, you know, I can't talk about that. Or like, come on, is that, is that really feminine? Or is that really masculine? Come on, what are we going to go backwards here about basic biology or basic um, you know, when you like, like Sheikh Kaman said, if you're raising kids, you have a boy, you have a girl. There's just inclinations. You don't have to teach them to be more feminine or more masculine. There's basic inclinations. Like your son is a lot more aggressive, and the way they fight. You know, if you have two sons, they're fighting all the time from two years old. And your daughter is not like that, right? And she's more inclined to nurturing behavior. She has a little doll, you know, or she makes a doll on, uh, on her own. So, like, I, I think we've gone off the deep end of pretending these things don't exist. These yeah. basic biological differences. Yeah. That's and we thing. only pick on the fringe. Yeah. Oh, I have a daughter who likes cars. Yeah, but that's like one in a, yeah. in a, in a yeah. you know, or like wrestling, you know, but that's not the common thing. It's, not the it's like, it's like, oh, there is a person confusing about, like, I was talking to some Muslim these days, just, mm -hmm. just an extension a little bit, and she was telling me, oh, Sheikh uh, this whole gender identity story, like that, you know, there is somebody I know c heard of a c committed suicide because they were worried about what their gender is, so trying to protect. I mean, yeah, that's one in like, yani, don't make that the norm and you have to make every single kid in the school have to go for a week training what your gender is. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, somebody was arguing with me that everybody in the school has to be given the chance to figure out their gender. Yeah. You know, why? Because there is like some kid was confusing and because we didn't give them a chance as opposed and I'm to not saying that kid has no value. No, for sure. It has a value and it has its space to be dealing with. But you don't, you don't ruin the whole entire society yeah. for just one, one in, in a million. It's, it's a basic rejection. <laughs> yeah. I want to share the... the so, go, sorry, but I cut you off. I, said just, <laughs> I like what... Huh. No, I, I think it's on the same note. It's like the concept of... There's a term for... in, in, in uh, in fall logical fallacies where you take um, you take an, a fringe concept and you start d uh, considering it the, the default where it's the exact opposite in fiqh and usul right and, 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 and in logic it's just a logical premise is that hey ha if we have if we do and we do have a, pr a, pr a percentage of people who have gender identity issues and it's point zero whatever percent and it's it, it exists in the fiqh books from a thousand years ago right where it's like okay how about we dedicate resources in amongst uh, society to uh, give them resources and to help them and to help them through their situation as opposed to saying all right guys new rule for everybody You're all you all don't know your gender until further notice. It doesn't make sense Yeah, and that's that's what's happening in the schools where it's like you you know give the kids and then like, you know their legislation So on. It, it gets it just gets deeper and deeper and more polarized. Yeah, you sorry sure. uh, So there's there's one thing that some guys do and it is so girly and unacceptable to me. <laughs> but I've never opened my mouth publicly. But I've never told a guy, hey, take that off. But it's just insanely girly to me. That's like putting on a, a dress. You know, guys with long hair, <laughs> again. You know, girls wear this thing. I don't know what it's called. It has little teeth on it, kida. It looks like a, and they push it, kida, up to here. Wallahi al when I see a man wearing that, <laughs> yes, that's I want to end him. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I cannot step. Kif, yani. How could you do that? So <laughs> I didn't get it. Is the clip one? It's a thing, kid. What is it called? 
هيد باند اند ذن بوش ات خليها كده بس لغايه هنا اوف بوت ليبستيك اون احسن لك يو بي مور اوف ا مان تو مي اف يو بوت ليبستيك اند كم تو مي يو نو شيف وات اف وات اف ذي ستارت ميكينج مو ويذ ويذ ا باسكتبول تيم لوجو اون ذن اوف مانلي ذي كان بوت ا جان اون ات ويل ستيل بي تو ريديكولوس اوكي وات ايلس سو ان ماسكولين تو يو شيف اوكي سو اي ثينك وي 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 ار ارجوينج Uh, we want to bring like physical, actual traits, right? Hmm. I think you might have to come back to me on this. Sometimes examples kind of get it. Yeah, I, got, I got another one. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but, but, but this is, this is so common, but when, when, well, maybe I, shaving. Yeah. That's the difference between us and the females. This stuff right here. <laughs> Why, why, why do you sh- remove everything, every- and you come to me trying to look like you were born yesterday? Why? <laughs> That's like the major difference with f- out, yeah, the appearance, why? The beard, yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. But I don't like, tell, go around telling people, hey, brother, this, uh, but see, I mean, come on, man, something here, something, anything. Type, <laughs> check, come on, what about a- a- qua- like a- um, traits? Not physical. Oh, just let me clarify, especially when the guy is young and he shaves. Yani, if some people, they're old, they're, yani, old men, kid, they shave everything. Oh, no matter what, it's a disaster. <laughs> But you got this guy, he's 16, and he's already smooth skin. Would you say Jennifer, or Edwina, or pick a fill, fill any name, Kathleen, Catherine, Caitlin, nothing, kid, and he's already young and he's 16. Add some ruggedness, ya habibi. Have some ruggedness there. But these values are, see, what I'm saying now is just funny. Because this idea of like, or this idea of, you know, have a manly appearance is just, oh, what is this? A man isn't that, and man is. Uh, but it's interesting. I, I travel with Sheikh Kamal. Sheikh Kamal will hold everything off until he, and any Sudanese like that. Um, <laughs> He would never walk out the house or the hotel room until he ironed his clothes. It's amazing, <laughs> you know, how committed he is to this. Drive me crazy, you know, sometimes when we travel. Also, the knees like that would never walk out with a thobe or it's like, like some brothers, I see them in the parking lot, pop the trunk looking for a thobe, okay? <laughs> Then he put it on and he got to the master. You know, he gets his stuff from the, from the car, you know? Or someone I know has his shirt and his backpack for a week in his car and just get it. <laughs> you know? Then he put it on. The, why I'm saying this about Sheikh Kamal? Because when he says about this whole care so much about like look and it's not, like, it's not coming from someone who doesn't care about his look. Look, mashallah. So, you know. <laughs> What here is the point is not the look. The point is when men became so obsessed about it became number one important. Yeah. For me is basically is to make sure that you know it, it became too much. It, it became have, have uh, basically it, there is a little there, there is not there is a sense of of provenances, because what it meant for men, men will work. Yeah. Men will have a hard work. Tomorrow you need to provide for your family. You're not gonna have time to, you know, to every, you're not gonna have the money to, when you have family to support, every 10 days you go to a haircut, spend $50 in the, in the, in the mall. You're not gonna be able to do that every time. You're not gonna be able to, you know, uh, to be so like soft, it cannot, that's basically, it's not about being soft or being like this, it's about, in my opinion, when you grow up and this became your priority, the real priorities that is supposed to you taking care of, it will be kind of hard to make that decision, how to make that, to set your priorities straight. That's why Nabi Sallallahu was upset with someone, he said Sallallahu if you have a hair, take good care of it. But he was upset with one of the companions. He said, I need so-and-so. They call him, Ya he's fixing his hair. Like f- cutting his hair, braiding his hair. Next time, where is so-and-so? He said, Ya Rasulullah, his house, his home, fixing his hair. Three times. So in Nabi Sallallahu was not happy with that. 
So Nebuchadnezzar was not against that you take care of your hair, but it became obsessed with this. You know, it became like as if this is what, yeah, the prior, priority number one for me before I go out. Um, so I, I hope that's kind of, I think a, that's really balance. fair. That's it's really a fair. balance. Literally everything we've spoken about today can just be brought right back to the concept of balance. Because I think, so for example, as Sheikh mentioned earlier, which is uh, exp uh, have a degree of roughness in the way that you uh, live, right? I think maybe, let me ask you, Sheikh, this question for, for your sons. When, if you, you have a son who's 16 and a daughter who's 16, uh, which of them do you prefer to go out and get, get, a, get a minimum wage job? Uh, no doubt the son. What are you worried no about, Sheikh? Yeah. I, it's, it's a no-brainer. And I, if, if Allah blesses me with children, that's exactly, like I've already said from now, is that my son, as soon as he's a teenager, you can go get a minimum wage job. You can learn how it is to serve people and learn the value of a dollar. I don't feel that way for, for my daughter. You know, I don't feel that way to, for, uh, because that's not her role in life. Yeah, it might, it, you, know, a, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. There's always like, well, life might take her there. And that's why we, alhamdulillah, we all believe in educating our daughters and making sure they're capable and so on. But there's one of the two where their entire role, and that's why like, people take the primitive cue that is supposed to um, uh, speak to what, it, what it's supposed to be about. So the athleticism of a man is because biologically and historically and socially, Men has to be out there and physical labor was the primary way you worked and you had to be a warrior and you had to defend and you have to be ready to defend. What's the point of a bodybuilder who works, you know, has the best physique but is a coward, right? It's useless. Yeah. You've got the physical uh, cue, but the reality of what it's supposed to represent is not there. So uh, I think we've been so obsessed. I think this is when I deal with teens and youth and this is how these charlatans online, these, these, these guys that Sheikh said, that they're, they're, you know, they're showing the Instagrams with the, with the money, and they get 500,000 followers, and they get all the money, and the, the young men are obsessed with them. Why? Because they hit all the primitive cues. They got the, the money, they got the women, they got the physique, which is all, um, you know, the primitive thing that's supposed to be... So biologically, why are, we, why are we impressed by a guy who can have five, six, seven women? It's because it implies that this guy is a caretaker. He has a tribe under him. He has, you know, like he's, that's what it implies. Nowadays, that's not it. He's a deadbeat <laughs> and he's the exact opposite. Uh, and, so, and so on and so forth. When you see a strong guy with the muscles, it implies that this guy is athletic, he's strong, he's, he's reliable. But what it actually means typically is that he's super insecure. He spends a ton of time on his appearance. He takes, takes steroids probably. And like so on, he's, it's the exact opposite of what it's meant to represent. So, so biologic, unless some people are, are gifted. We're, we're very pro steroids in this message. Oh no way! All right then. Probably <laughs> 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 not. So I, it's, I only use it for back pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think we're in an epidemic today of the the cue, the 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 primitive cue of what something is supposed to represent versus what someone who really has it. And the Prophet gave the, 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 the principle. لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِالصُّرْعَةِ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّدِيدُ مَنْ يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عَنْدَ الْغَضَبِ The strong person, the real strong person is not the guy who just um, can just defeat someone else in, in, a, in, a, in a wrestling match. But the real strength is someone who can hold his anger. Someone who's genuinely dangerous, he can defeat someone else if he wanted to. Uh, he has the power to, but he got angry and he's like, no, you know what, I'll drop it. You know, so just, just let me clarify that what, the way Sheikh Walid said it is exactly what I'm trying to say, right? So I actually don't have respect for someone who is scraggly and, and everything is wrinkled and a mess and it smells bad. And that's not manly. That's just someone who doesn't know how to take care of himself. But, and I don't know if we're aware of how much like looks are this the big thing. For males, with the eyebrows, we got to the level of the eyebrows like this and this. There was a brother one time, he cut his hair somehow and he's just telling us about it. So he's trying to make him feel good. Yeah, I just praised his haircut. He started telling me about the next cut and the next color he's going to dye it. Oh. Then he got me on WhatsApp and for the next couple of months, oh, no. every time he dyes his hair, he sends me a picture. And next time I'm going to try this. And I'm like, if, I, if you only knew <laughs> how little I care about your hair. I really don't care. But let's get to the anger thing. You know, uh, so I have a khutbah on anger that I gave uh, probably two, three years ago. It's still on our YouTube channel. But because there's some important points in it. And psychologists say that anger is a secondary emotion. And once you understand that, you'll understand why you're getting angry. What does it mean, secondary emotion? You know, when you're driving and then a guy like comes in front of you and you, and you get really scared and you almost crash into him, and, but you swerve, nothing happened. What happens right after? 
Like first you got really scared, second what happens? Anger. You get very angry. So it's a secondary emotion. And why are you angry? If for everyone it could be something different. But I uh, hated that I got so scared and I felt so vulnerable and cowardly. Maybe even made it sound like <laughs> And now I feel so bad that this guy made me make that sound. So now I'm like, <laughs> trying to be man all, all of, you know. Or, uh, and, I, and I read this in a psychology book like 18 years ago. And it took me many years to get it because, you know. And they're saying that uh, when you get angry or where you're, when you erupt, you, it makes you feel like you're in control. Like you took control of your emotions and you took control of the situation. That this person made me angry instead of like being a coward, keeping it to myself, which would, which not necessarily cowardly, Anya, but that's how it is now. So I let him have it, and I spoke my mind, and I screamed at him at the top of my lungs, and I stormed out of there. And that's why we go and tell each other about the time I gave someone a tongue lashing, yani a beating, vis verbally, right? What happens when someone says something, you go to your friend, you know, and the guy said this, then I said, look, I swear to God, this, 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 and I threatened him. That, yeah, good job, man, good job. Like, that's the exact opposite of the hadith, because the strong person controls it. I'm coming to boast to you about how I went off on this guy. All the time, I went off on him. I let him have it. I screamed at him at the top of my lungs. Yeah, in sports and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very, very it, it feels like... Sheikh, uh, speaking of the issue uh, that you mentioned earlier, there is something that came on, uh, on YouTube and TikTok, TikTok, and you know, so many videos came out, which is guys complaining about work. Have you seen this? Like crying, like you know, like crying. There's too many customers. <laughs> Starbucks have to, to start limiting the number of people. I saw a guy like, and you said, you said Starbucks has to stop to, to control how many people can make an order a day. This is too much. This, he might be overwhelmed, but let me, when you see a bunch of people like that, yeah. guys, you know. I'm wondering, that's exactly what we're talking about. The issue of you're supposed to be providing, you're supposed to be, have that ability to find, but you're not raised this way, you know? You, you're raised to be a cupcake, you know? <laughs> to anything can, you, any... Uh, uh, Cotton uh, candy, uh, chef, sweet and soft. Yeah. <laughs> so, you, you know, that, 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 Robert, that someday you might need it, you know? It, but again, it's important to keep that balance in, in mind. Being rough doesn't mean being rude, being angry, be, but you know, being able to, to carry responsibility. It, it's really dropping the ball. It's something so weird in, in society today. You know, like I get burnt so many times, you know, dealing with people, it doesn't show up. We have a program. Uh, I can't share. Why? I just can't. You know, you just drop the ball. That, that doesn't go, that's, for me, that's the opposite of being, you know, res taking responsibility, what it means a man. Being a man of your word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that for me, that's what really it means, masculinity or uh, manhood or like being a, a real man uh, is about you be, your ability to take responsibility and to basically to be a leader and part of it to be a role model. SubhanAllah, there is a concept in Islam, it's called, even book written, it's called Al-Futuwa. Al-Futuwa, which is, masculinity is very, very much what it is. You know, uh, written in all days. Talk about the importance of raising a generation of men. You know, in France, in World War II, they talk about that we, one of the reasons that we lost the war is because there's no frank, good, strong French soldier. They were very feminine. They were very weak, very spoiled. You know? So one of the things that they talk about today even, you know, uh, uh, that, that this, uh, Yeni, we don't want a society that it does not have people when a time of responsibility comes, when a time of toughness comes, we couldn't find any. That's not gonna be correct. Sheikh, it's happening right now. I, I knew about this a couple of years ago and I confirmed this 
more than once with people in the army. You know, if you think about like the toughest thing you can go through, you most likely think of basic training in the army. I don't know how many weeks it is, but that's like one of the toughest things you can go through, basic training. Basic training has gone soft now, or softer. I just confirmed this a few weeks ago with someone, and, and he was telling me yes. So now, you know, in the beginning, you come off the bus and they're screaming at you and they're insulting you and all that stuff. Now, you can't yell like that. They get time off during basic training to check their phones. Ooh, nice. Yeah, can you imagine basic training has become like that? Sounds great. Nobody looks surprised over here. <laughs> basic training was the roughest thing in the world. And now they give them time to check their phone. You cannot be demeaning to the recruits, uh, hurt their feelings. <laughs> yeah? Babe, this, is, this guy's supposed to go meet bullets and, and, and landmines and, and bombs and you not hurt his feelings. But I'm not, by the way, I'm at least, I'm very not pro that kind of nonsense anyway. So I'm not saying. Yeah, 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 but yeah so using false language and yeah, yeah. abuse and stuff that we're not, yeah, very good. Yeah, but, but you have to be certain level of that. Tayyip. Uh, well, Sheikh uh, Abdul Rahman. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say something. Like, Please. I also don't, I don't like the yeah, idea. We have to wrap it up. When, when people try to make something <laughs> represent masculinity. I, I can't stand that. And it happens a lot. And you see it, like, for example, guns. So now it's like, be, like loving guns that makes you a man. Or if, you're not a, if you don't like guns, you're not a man. Or you want to make your son brave, take him out to the range. What is that going to do with anything? Or like, you know, with non-Muslims, beer also. It's a very manly thing. Alcohol, how much you can chuck. That, that has nothing to do with being a man. And fighting has nothing to do with really just about you being a man at the end of the day. So beware of something equals being a man. Beware of those kinds of things. I think we, we I mean, just so we, we, so we can leave here having kind answered. Of, yeah, a last point to everyone, yeah. So we can leave here having answered a question. What does it mean to be a man? Sheikh had answered what the surveys say when they, when they ask young men who are coming of age and, and are going to have to be the next generation's fathers you know, and, and leaders and whatnot. So that's obviously a messed up list. <laughs> that's like all superficial yeah. nonsense that is just that doesn't last, and it it's explains why they see these uh, these charlatans online, these these YouTubers and whatever, and they give them all their money, and they you know like hey teach me how to be a man. They say oh, be tough, you know it's nonsense. Whereas as a, as when we took the survey here, and w thing is like when you said that when you do the survey in a masjid, they know what you're looking for, so they say it. So that means we know. It's not like we're it's down, hidden we from know, us. Yeah. But deep down we know. We just it's not it's not as easy. It's a lot easier to be, to say, it's, uh, being a man is I can curse whenever I want and say whoever I want, say whatever I want to whoever. But it's harder to hold yourself and you know, accountable and to speak like a man. Like a rajul and a like like Sheikh mentioned, that a man's word used to mean so much, like in the past, al mujawara, like giving your protection to somebody. Somebody could walk into Mecca or, or whatever town, Mecca is different, I guess, another, any other town and say, I have the protection of Sheikh Walid in Texas here in Houston. And just by virtue of your name being mentioned, they didn't like, they'll go verify later, but in the moment, this guy could be an enemy, it can't be touched. Because that's how far a man's word goes. It was a big deal. Nowadays, a man's word means nothing. Because it's cool to lie, it's cool like I, I deceived them and so on. So I, I, if, if we had to narrow it down, a man is capable. Capable means like he could act if he wanted, but he has the discipline not to. So ca capability, discipline, dependability, and some level of toughness. And that's where... I'll give you guys an exercise you can do, is that all the superficial cues that we take uh, by, you know, strength, uh, strong body, athleticism, everything that was in that list, getting a bunch of women, uh, whatever, you know, uh, being, uh, fighting a lot, all of those. Six pack. Uh, six pack. Six pack I, have, I have six pack. <laughs> Inshallah, there you go. That, that's the, the I'm, I'm working my way towards Every, every person has six pack. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's true, actually. Sometimes it's hidden under your fat, <laughs> <laughs> under the one pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, every uh, the challenge I would I would say to young men is that every single one of those superficial cues that we see, what is it meant to represent? That's what it is to be a man. So when the guy has a bunch of women, that's meant to represent him being capable, dependable, reliable, Beautiful. protector, and so on. Well said. Well said. Uh, okay. Before we end with you, I have two quick points. Number one is. Uh, there is a trick here, and I want to make sure, I, I hope I can express it clear. One of the trick of the mind, and shaitan if you want to say, when you talk about, for example, the man keep his word. So, is that means women don't need to keep the word? Man has to be earning person. 
So a woman cannot be an earning person? See how the person starts thinking? That's absolutely nonsense, that's wrong. That doesn't work this way. It's like when I say, woman is, you know, have a good heart. No man's supposed to think, I should not have a good heart. Woman should be support, you know, support. The woman's supposed to be leading. Woman's supposed to be effective in society. Doesn't mean so. You can't do the opposite. So make sure that we don't get into this dilemma, especially from the sister side, because this is comes, I know it's hard for someone all his life lived, fed the whole society around you, it make it men versus women. As if there is a constant struggle who control. I think it is men and women, not men versus women. Okay? So this is, can be very damaging to this topic when we start thinking this way. And I, th I hope us as a Muslim, we can bring to the society at large this idea. That's not me versus her. It's like any, it's not men versus women. It's men and women. Everybody, they have their own qualities. Everybody, and I think these voices that we hear today from some, you know, psychologists and, and people talk about these issues became very popular in society. I think Muslim can even have a better way of expl explaining that. Okay, and you should not be mad just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives certain favor for men or certain favor for women or certain responsibility for men. You know, I don't get mad because, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have give certain favor for children and, and adults get jealous and, you know, it doesn't work this way. Everybody has its own set of rules and assignment and so forth. So I hope this is something that we keep in mind. The other thing that I want to say that... Um, I think in the Muslim community, I have been seen among a lot of youth, the both extreme, exactly like we see in society. You know, uh, just make sure you don't need to go to these, just keep that in mind. You know, it's kind of, it doesn't mean to be rude and rough and like all those kind of things, you know. Uh, 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 no, also, this idea of stripping you from your masculinity and making you feel shame to be a man, shame to be a boy, shame to be, you know, the head of the household, the leader of the, you know, of the community, that I feel like leadership. You know what? You want to be a leader too? Be a leader. Nobody holding you. But you should not ever let someone strip you from that. And you don't reach that level. You don't deserve that just because you have a private part of a, of a, of a, of a and I'm sorry to put it this way, of a, of, a, of a male. No, you reach that and you deserve that because you earn that through your behavior, responsibility, leadership, and so on. So it's not about your, your, your biology. Uh, uh, biology. It's, it's about your attitude. Otherwise, there is men worth nothing. Worth nothing. And, you know, so it, it, it is so important for you to, to make sure that you understand that balance. Don't let, it's not a bad thing to be a man. Today is not a cool thing, which is so sad in society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you this beautiful thing to be a man. Don't let any, Allah said in the Quran about the shaitan, I will order them to change the way Allah created them. Allah created you a man, created you a woman. The moment you start to don't want to be a man, you can't be anybody else other than you. The best person you can be is yourself. If you start looking for someone else to be, you will not succeed. And that's what we see in society today. And the shaitan made a promise to Allah, I will make them, I will change in the way they created. Don't let anyone change you from the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have made you. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La'an Allah, Allah curse the men who act like women. The men who imitate women. And Allah curse the women who act like men, imitate men. You know, there's a lot to be said, but I don't want to keep you long. 
you know, there is a culture factor has to be understood. Not everything in Sudan, not everything in Egypt, not everything in my generation necessarily applied to your generation. I think there is a struggle for you guys as a young generation. You have to figure it out. You have to talk about it. You have to have a real open discussion about certain things in your, in your age group with people with experience to give you a guidance. But there is, you know, there is a big area here. The culture is, is, a, is a factor, is a determined factor. So I, with this, I end what I have. We'll okay. go this way, Sheikh Kamal, then Shah Rahman, and we end with that, inshallah, right. quickly. Um, so we, people, you know, maybe as a young male in America, you feel like there's been an assault on men, fathers, masculinity, a lot of laws are unfair, divorce, all kinds of things, like the father is marginalized, the man, the man is attacked all the time. So then when someone comes and they're defending masculinity, and maybe even going a little overboard that looks attractive because we, now we're just being reactionary that we're kind of upset at what's going on and now this person is standing up for us. So be aware of just rallying behind anybody who says anything. Like Andrew right? Tate? Yeah, I mean, uh, Andrew Tate, Tate? I, I've listened to some of the stuff he said and some of the stuff, you know, is okay and sometimes, this is of course, before he became brother, brother Andrew, <laughs> you know, I would hear some things and say like, this, this is outrageous, or, or this, not outrageous, but... Uh, Excessive. Yeah, or maybe like I would feel like some, some things were uh, off and muhim. The point is, I want to say uh, uh, just a few things. Un-Islamic. Yeah, yeah, un-Islamic. Uh, the first thing is, when can you say, when can two males in America, let's say you're 18, your buddy is 18, or you're both 21, when can you say I love you to your friend? When is it acceptable in America? Two males when you are say, gay. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's very unacceptable. They didn't but when is it acceptable to say, I love you to your friend? <laughs> I mean, in the modern days, in society in America, yeah, when they are like gay, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> There's another one. It's sort of gayness. There's drunk. another. Huh? Drunk. When you're drunk. You guys don't know this one? Uh, and it's that. not and it's not I love you. It's I love you, man, like that. <laughs> oh, that's that not one <laughs> that's in drunk. sports. You know, some, some pats on the back <laughs> side, acceptable, right? But how awkward, you, okay, I, I'm trying, my final word is don't be, don't be like the, the product of your environment, okay. even though you know it's wrong. So, two of you now who are friends, next time you're in a room together, without sports, without loud noise, just look at your friend and say, I love you, man. Exactly. <laughs> and don't say no homo. <laughs> you know this, Sheikh Wali? You gotta say no homo, Sheikh. You know this thing, yeah? This is a thing where you if, you, if you tell your friend something a little bit affectionate or whatever, you say no homo. <laughs> so, no so, homo, Sheikh. <laughs> so do that, okay? Look at, look at how we hug each other. Sheikh, do you ever analyze the, I call it the thug hug. Do you ever analyze the thug hug? You know, when I went, I, vis I went overseas some years ago, and I would hug people like we hug each other in America, and they didn't understand, like, what? What's did, going on? did you analyze this hug? <laughs> the way we hug each other. Do you understand it? We go like this, and then we go like this. <laughs> so you see what's happening here? We're putting this barrier. to create a barrier. So we don't go chest to chest now. Come on now. So we do this thing. There's a distance. And so I would hug people like this, and they do they understand? Why are you putting something between us? You understand? Sheikh, you gotta, Sheikh, let, us, you gotta let us keep the hug, Sheikh. Yeah. <laughs> Sheikh <laughs> that's where I draw the line. Is, is it because, like, when I think overseas, you know, when I go to Egypt and, and Palestinian cultures, there is like certain culture, kida, they men, when they, the men kiss each other, you know, oh my God, I can't take it. You're like, <laughs> he suck your lips. <laughs> he suck your, 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 cheeks, your, cheeks. your, your cheek cheeks. with his lips. You know, he, he's, sorry, he he's suck your cheek with the love. Mm. Like, I'm like, <laughs> after like, you know, but you know what? Just, just look at this point. When this happened overseas, there is not a single man over there have a doubt about their manhood. Yes, Sahih. And they don't have to say. You don't have to say yeah. no homo. <laughs> because it's, uh, it's well established. Here, as if I need to defend and to, you know what, no, 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 no. As if like this is going to make me, you know, feel like I'm not a man anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's very interesting, actually, how the culture it's plays paradox. Chef, perception. Have, it's a big I, paradox. I have a story that's so hilarious, but I can't say it unless we stop streaming. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's about this culture of misunderstanding. Anyways, this is, this is what my final... When the Prophet ﷺ and Abu Bakr were leaving to Medina, they first went in the other direction. As you know, they went into Ghar Thawr, and they stayed there for three days. Now, Ghar we translate in English as cave, but a kaf is a cave, and Ghar we translate as cave also. But they're not the same thing. A cave can be huge and cavernous, and it can fit from seven to a hundred or a thousand people. But a Ghar is an opening that it's so small, it only fits two to three people. That's a Ghar. Now go home, go on YouTube, and I keep saying go home, like people don't have phones anymore. Just YouTube, Ghar Thor, and you'll see videos of it. You won't believe how tiny it is. Yeah, so I, I went there. I, like, you, you, when you go there, you, I, was, I was wondering how the Prophet hide there. Imagine three days there. So what happened when the Prophet Abu Bakr made into Ghar? There's the narration of Abu Bakr checking for snakes and, and I was going to say ladders, uh, scorpions. <laughs> right? yeah. Then what happened when everything was clear and they sat down? Today you just... Look, Get on your phone, khalat. Type, what did they do? The Prophet put his head on Abu Bakr's lap and fell asleep. That's. Look at that. Look at that friendship. Yani, Shaykh Abdul Rahman and I were giving this talk about the man, but right now, if me and him went somewhere and I put my head on his lap, <laughs> he'd be like, Look, this is homo right now. This is, this, get up. But yeah, I'm tired. I'm from this. Brooklyn. <laughs> But just, I, <laughs> like you marvel at how amazing that is and how innocent. But, but yeah, there's, there's a culture thing, that's right. It is a culture thing, but I'm saying you can't, yeah. you, I, mean, I don't know. I, I, I think, guess. <laughs> Sheikh, I, I think. You um, ruined it for me. No, there, there, and this is why we keep running into, if we go scenario by scenario, we're always going to find, well, it changed over time and this and that. I think that's why I, 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 I resorted to broad definitions like insecurity or, or determination or this or that. I think my, my final uh, comment on this is that I really think this, this applies outside of masculinity, femininity, but mm -hmm. let's keep it in our topic here, is that we really got to, as American Muslims, we really got to stop being reactionary in our understandings of things. We wait until they've given us a term and it became toxic masculinity, uh, femininity, this or that, and then we say, uh, we define everything we, we believe in as a reaction to what they've just uh, accused, whether we agree or disagree. So there's a segment of our population, typically more, the more uh, uh, conservative brothers and sisters, who are, their first reaction is rejection. Whatever you say. If you say men should cry, no, I don't do it. And then the, the, there's this typical other segment of the population, which is found in my, my neck of the words in New York, more liberal-sided people, who are immediate acceptance until further notice. So why do we have to either? I think the strongest position we can have is irrespective of what you guys say, I'm going to define things my way Islamically and move outwards from there. Yes. So, and the perfect example is the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, when he was kissing his grandson Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the man came and just was shocked, said, you kiss your, you kiss your children? I have 10 children, wallah, he never gave a single one of them a kiss. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say, no, no, guess what, I'm a man, I'll show you, I fight war, and he, he, didn't, like, have, he didn't defend anything, nothing. He said, what can I do for you if Allah didn't give, put mercy in your heart? You're the problem. Like your definition, your understanding of what it means. The, the comment, like it was all delivered. The message, your definition of what it means to be a man and strength and roughness is wrong, and this is correct. And what can I do for you if you don't have the mercy? I'm not going to defend my position. I'm not. This is my position. This is the ilahi position, the divine position. And you can go and kick rocks if you like. And of course, the man had no other choice but to submit. And that's. I think we should move inwards, uh, uh, outwards, with our position. Mm -hmm. Go straight to the seerah men and women of the, of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his wives and his daughters and the Sahaba. Exactly what did they do and we move outwards. Don't, we shouldn't react to what they define then we were playing catch up the entire time. To the liberals, to the conservatives, to these people, to that people. It puts us in that position where we're entirely defining our entire identity by what they've said plus minus. I think that's a bad starting point and that's the root of all this conversation. Allah, Allah. I, I think, Shaykh Kamal, I didn't ruin it for you. I, what, I, what, I, what I think your point is 100% valid. What you're trying to say, you're not trying to say, hey, put your heads on somebody else's lap. Yeah, your your point not. is, it's not a shame for a man to show love and to show compassion. Just to yes. have that self-esteem. Especially with your do, close yeah. friend. That was my whole the point. Whole 
Exactly. Do so, this exercise. Tell your friend I love you tonight. See, everyone's laughing already. <laughs> Don't you love him? Why can't you tell him then? What's the problem? You know, I always tell people that I love that I love them. I'm not talking about my family. <laughs> Forget those two. I'm talking about any brother I love dearly, I always tell him I love him. Always. And I don't mean, We try to Islamicize it. This is just for Allah. I don't really... <laughs> I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when I love someone, I tell them. Always. Why not? Life's short. Inshallah. I, I think uh, this should be tapped with another discussion, inshallah, one more uh, time. Uh, there is a lot of things, but I, I really hope this can open a discussion or, or talk and uh, and maybe we can hear from you guys next session uh, more about this topic and about other topics as well. But I would like to talk about femininity as well. That's a whole entire also uh, big movement uh, exists today in our society. Um, and, and it really will be an interesting to uh, have a guest of one of the sisters uh, to speak about it as well. Um, inshallah ta'ala, maybe uh, in the coming uh, weeks. Thank you guys for coming out in this uh, rainy uh, night, and it's been uh, a very long night for, for so many of you. Um, but uh, I want to remind we have uh, several events going on in the community uh, this weekend. One of it is tomorrow, I think there is a big gathering in uh, MCC, uh, inshallah ta'ala, there is a gala, so uh, make sure you get your ticket, you, you attend. Uh, also, uh, coming soon, ICNA conference. Uh, mass ICNA conference, um, or ICNA mass conference, I don't know how it works, but uh, yeah, coming in Thanksgiving, uh, inshallah ta'ala, uh, that's something that I, I, I think we should all as a community to be part of that and support it as well. Are you going to be there? Uh, Are you out of town? If I am in town, I do, in Thanksgiving, alhamdulillah, it's been a habit for me. And Thanksgiving, we always have a family dinner in, in Austin with, with, uh, with my in-laws. So it become like something that we always, every year, and it became something I care to be there to see a lot of people that I don't see uh, often. But if I'm here, inshallah, I'm planning to be, inshallah, Saturday, uh, hopefully, uh, be there. But also, Sheikh Kamal also have a couple of events coming up until the end of December. Those who go for Umrah in November or in December, uh, make sure that you, you basically uh, make dua for us. And fall break coming, winter break coming. I'm looking forward to have some activity with you guys. And, and please keep in touch. Let's, let's have some fun during this uh, break. Deal? Sure.